All right. Well, Elaine is the most important person to hear. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, so apparently your your audio is coming in fine, Elaine. Mine is a okay. bit muffled. Okay. So are we ready? But just about. Okay. Well, here we go. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today at the Virtual Chillicothe Public Library. It's my pleasure to introduce Elaine Snyder, who is a genealogist and a researcher, and she's going to share some of her expertise and walk you through um, some of the features of Ancestry Library Edition, which is available um, from your home to these days. Um, that's kind of a special feature right now uh, because of COVID. So I'm not sure how long it will be available, but they've allowed us at least through March for you to be able to access library edition um, from your homes. So I may walk you through at the end just how to find that from the library catalog. Um, again, sorry if my audio isn't muffled. Um, we'll just try and make the best of it today, I guess. But I will go ahead and turn it over to Elaine. Thank you for being here, all the way from sunny Texas. <laughs> well, hello, actually from Texas. <laughs> I'm enjoying the warm weather down here. Anyway, I know some of you because I see the names, but I am Elaine Snyder. I live in Chillicothe and I was a teacher in the IVC district for over 30 years. Um, I've used Ancestry now for several I don't know, 20 years or so. Um, I got started in it with my mother when I was just a teenager. So I've been at this probably 50 years or more. And I use it a lot because I write books for the family. I, I put together a book. So anyway, I'm going to show you today this um, from Ancestry, Ancestry Library, and help you to see what you can do. It is not quite the same as Ancestry because you cannot build a tree with it, but it's here to do research. So I did send uh, or include a packet of forms. Those forms will help you to stay organized as you collect information. So that's what they were for. And you know, when you have questions, maybe something will come up that, that you need to know. Okay, I hope you can see here, I've got my cursor. Um, if not, I guess you'll have to find a way to get a hold of Catherine to help you. Anyway, here we are, Ancestry Library. And across the top, you'll see some different categories that they're offering you. So I'll just kind of walk you through a couple of these different things and help you to know how to get started. Um, one of the things Ancestry does is this newspapers.com. And you see here they've got 262 million obituaries in that. I actually use that a lot. Um, you can go back into newspapers and find a lot of information in obituaries. There is one little problem though. They have two levels. They have an entry level and then they have, of course, the more expensive level that you have to pay for. And I found that since a lot of my relatives spent time in Chicago, the more expensive one is the one I had to have because of the Chicago Tribune. And it's only released into the expensive level. So anyway, um, here it talks about begin searching. And I'm gonna jump right over here too. You'll see keep coming up that you can save these records. You can save them either printing them out or you can use a flash drive. But as you find things, it's a good thing to save them because if you have to go back looking for them again, there's a good chance you'll have to spend a lot of time trying to find that very same one. So the searching part, if we click here, it's going to come up with this um, little form to fill in, okay? Um, you'll, you'll need to start with a first name and middle if you have it or initial and then last name and then this is very basic the place where they might have lived um, and then the birth year i myself my grandparents are from germany so i right away had problems because i can find things here in the united states 
But as soon as I went to Germany, I had to go to a higher level of Ancestry.com. And I'll talk about that later. Here are some of the um, records that they offer. This is called the card catalog. And in that catalog are the thousands of different records that they have assembled for you. Now, a lot of times they'll offer you a chance to see the actual record. Um, keep in mind that 100 or more years ago, you know, the script, the writing that they used is kind of hard to read, especially if you get into other countries. So what Ancestry has done on most of these things is retype them out so they're much, much easier to read. But of course, you might want to have a copy of the real document, which they can offer to you as well. Okay, I'm going to jump now to um, go back to home. And we start with this page. Okay, on this page, they're offering you how to or how to search the censuses, um, vitals like uh, births, deaths, marriages, uh, things like that. Then we have military and then, of course, immigration. And the things that they offer you here are public member trees. Those are people who have a tree on Ancestry and they have marked it as public, meaning anyone who belongs to Ancestry can see the people in their tree. Now, they also have a, um, uh, let's see, uh, protection on it so only people who are deceased can be seen unless that person gives you permission to see people who are still alive and that is of course to help to protect identities besides public member you can make it private i keep all of my trees private um, i have some relatives who are concerned about other people seeing their ancestors names or parents and such so i in order to you know appease them i keep them private that doesn't stop people from asking to see information in my tree and of course when they do that i quickly say um why why do you want to see it and more times than not it's a relative and so then i give them permission they can go in and see the tree if i don't like or they've done it long enough, then I can also delete them so they cannot see it anymore. But here's some things that you can find, and we'll probably talk about a couple of those as we go. We'll start here with census. Now, I'm gonna jump down here. Here's all the censuses that are available. You can see um, they go from, um, here's deaf, people, they've got Indian, they've got all kinds of censuses. Okay, so if you want to find something in a census, which is a good place to start, you're going to start by entering a name. Okay, now to help you um, see how it's going to work, I hope it's okay, but I'm going to uh, use my grandparents. Okay, John Weinzer was my grandfather. He was born in 1885 and he was born in Germany. So I can, I'm being very you know, general for Germany right now. He died in 1954. The story is, is that I was a year old and he had had a stroke. So he sat by my playpen and I entertained him for at least the last year or two of his life. So I kind of feel good about that. Okay, I'm skipping down here to gender is male. Nationality was German. Um, I can go back at the top and fill in some more things. Sometimes family members, spouse is good. I'll put it, my grandmother. And I will also put in her maiden name. Now that's important if you're looking for women. Uh, we know that once they marry, of course, their name changes. But a lot of the records, especially, especially early censuses, will have their maiden name. So when I get most of it or some of it in, um, you don't have to do it all, but then we'll click search. Okay, now what happens is 
the search engines in Ancestry have located people by the name of John Weinzerl. Now you'll see here, John Weinzerl at the top. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of in the way here, I guess. But here's another one, but you'll see it's not spelled the same. Okay, that's, that's a warning to me to be very, very careful what I want to do. Now, my grandfather lived in Stanford, Illinois, which is Allen Township, and it is in McLean County. So I can kind of guess that that's probably him. Here is one listed with a sibling Benedict. No, that is not my grandfather. So be very careful what you're looking for. You wanna prove as much as you can that you have the correct person. Okay, we're gonna start here and I'm going to click or hold my cursor over this. And what Ancestry has done, as you, as you see, well, let's see here. I'll just click it. They're going to give us a view of the actual census, and I'll show you that in a minute. But what's nice about Ancestry is they've taken the information from that and typed it out so that I can read it. You'll notice when I show you the handwriting was um, census takers were just people who went from door to door and wrote down and filled out the form. And many times they can spell it wrong, they can get something wrong, they can uh, hardly read their writing. So on this particular census, we're gonna find out that my grandfather was a farmer. He rented the house. Um, he, he did finish eighth grade. And then this is the members that lived in the house at that time. There were actually eight boys and there's only five here. So the three oldest ones had already moved out. And now we'll go look at the actual document. Now you can see they're, they're difficult to read. Ooh, I wonder if I can, okay, great. I can move that over. Um, I'm gonna enlarge this over here on the right. And they've highlighted with a little bit of a yellow. Here's my grandfather, John Weinzerl. At this time, he was, um, let's see, he was 54 years old. He was from Germany. And here's his wife and children listed in their ages. This one right here, Robert, is my father. So my father was 11 years old at the time of this census. Now across the top, they will show you the categories for each. Now the problem with censuses that I see is that every 10 years when they did a census, it wasn't necessarily the same information that they asked. So that was in 1940. If I go to 1930 and look at its census, it might have a lot of the same information, but it also might have some different information. Okay, censuses are also kind of fun because you can see who the neighbors were. When I showed some to my mother, she was just, oh, I remember them. They live right down the road. Okay, now we talked about being able to save this. Right here, attached to this, they right away say, you can send this document. And if you click on that document, it will ask you for an email and they'll send it to you. You can also um, go in and look around, they give you information. You can save it to a flash drive and you might prefer to do that as well. But here's all your information. Here you see that they had spelled it wrong, but then underneath they had changed the spelling. And just a real quick look, here again is the 1930 census. This one person had some pretty decent writing, so it's a lot, lot easier to read. And here is my uncle, great aunt, great aunt and uncle. They live just down the road. And then here is my grandfather. Okay, so that's how that works for census. Now, 
one thing about census that you will find if you're searching for censuses, and that is, let me get back to where I need to be. Um, they are released every 10 years, but they have a 72 year lag, which means the latest one that is now public is 1940, right down here in this little chart down here on the right. 1950 will come out in two years because they lag 72 years. So this or 2020 was the 70th year and then two more, and then that will make it, it's actually released then in 2022. Um, they did that, I think, to um, for privacy concerns. They didn't necessarily want to release a lot if there were still so many people alive. However, if you remember the last few censuses, at least that I've taken, they don't even list the members of the house by name and the age and their occupations and stuff. They ask a lot of questions. Are you a smoker and such like that? So I think the census information is going to change in the future. And so that's something to watch out for. Now, the 1890 census right here is a problem. In 18, um, when that census was taken and it was stored in DC at the Commerce um, Building, I believe, US Congress Building, they had a fire in 1921. And about 85, 95% of all of the census was um, burned and lost. Here in Illinois, we they were able to save um, information from McDonald County and um, another county as well, but most of everything else in the United States was lost. So if you're trying to find something in 1890, you, well, good luck. <laughs> you might not find it. And they probably will tell you that. It's called fragmented, that it was fragmented. Okay, so after census, we'll go next to vitals. Vitals are important things that happen during um, your ancestor's life. And if you're searching, uh, please use those forms or something like it to collect your information. I teach genealogy down here in our retirement park. And believe me, um, people have come in with shoe boxes full of little papers and index cards and, and envelopes and all of these things. And then they're trying to organize it. You need to start right at the beginning and make a page for each person, write down what you have, write down what you can't find or leave it so that you know what you're doing. That makes a big difference. Okay, so here again, we're going to put in my grandfather, born in 1885 in Germany, he died in 1954 in Illinois. Again, I'm just being kind of ge uh, general right now. Um, spouse was Fanny, um, gender male, and search. And as I find things, I would then have my paper, my form ready that I can add things to it. Okay, so these now we're looking for as vital informations here on the left, birth, baptism, christening, marriage, divorce, and death, burial, cemetery, and obituaries, things like that. Okay, now there's a couple good things that I have found through the years that I really, really like. And if one of them is right here in the middle, find a grave. If you have never used find a grave, I urge you to please, please try it. To me, it has helped more than I could ever imagine. So I'm gonna click on this and make sure it's my grandfather. Okay, I'm looking at the birth date and death date. He was born on Christmas day. And here are his children. He had eight sons 
and they have all passed by now. Okay, I happen to be a contributor to Find a Grave. And so you will see my name come up. Let's go to the website. I walk cemeteries, I take pictures of graves, I add obituaries for people, friends, and relatives that I have. Here is a picture of my grandfather a few years before his death. I, you see here, I added it because I am a co contributor. Here's his obituary. Here's his picture as a young man that's very close to when he immigrated to the United States. And you can even see things like uh, leave flowers. <laughs> you can leave flowers. Now, what I have done on Find a Grave is I have located the graves of all of his children. And by doing that, I connect them, I link them. And that way, as you find your person, you can find his spouse and you can jump to theirs. That's my grandmother. Okay. You can jump to one of the children. That's my father. You see, they're actually all in different towns, different towns, different places. But I have added pictures. This is an uncle. And then I can always go back. Oh, this is his wife and his son, but I can go back to my grandfather. So find a grave, if you go to memorials, they give you a start, hmm, okay, here it is. Here's the cover page, it's just called findagrave.com and you enter their names, first name, last name, where the cemetery is. If you know the city, fine, if you only know the state, fine. Each one, uh, I didn't show you, but each person is assigned a memorial number and so if i have that number i can type it in and it'll take me exactly to that very quickly here's some numbers that are going to show up so that's possibly one of them um, you can look for all kinds of things here you can go by cemetery if you have a cemetery and you think one of your relatives is buried there then go to the cemetery put in the name and it'll tell you all of the wines earls or whoever that are buried in that cemetery you can look for famous people like john wayne or marilyn monroe and find their graves and here contribute if you sign up like me then you can contribute i actually walk the cemetery in chillicothe and um I collect pictures for people. They'll send me um, requests, you know, can you find a grave for this, this, and this? So that's how that works. Okay, now let me get back to where I was. Do, do, do. <clears throat> Just keep going back as easy as right now, I think. Okay, let's see. Help, help, help. I don't want that. I think it might be the tab right to the left of the Find a Grave tab. Um, so the second to the left, is that where you're wanting to go back? This one? Um, no, the one to the right of that. Um, the one right between those two, right there. Is that where you're going? Well, I was going to go back to our here, here, here. I got it. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so from there, those are the vitals and you find, and that will help you fill in the sheets for birth and, and death and things like that. Um, next is military. Um, if you have an ancestor, who was in the military, you can start here. Um, a lot of them are drafts. My grandfather had to apply for the draft even though he was in his 50s, um, but that's written down. And of course, those of you who have someone in the military, you should be able to find things. In my husband's family, he actually had a great, great, great grandfather or so in the Civil War. And I was able to find his 
death certificate and things here under Civil War soldiers. So that's a great place to look for that. Okay, then next one is immigration. And I think this one might be some helpful to most people. I told you my grandparents were from Germany and I had a lot of trouble trying to get more information because one side of my family was Roman Catholic and Ancestry has not been able to get those particular um, records. So I actually had to hire a researcher. It was about $200, um, but I was very happy with what I got. So that is a possibility. This time I'm gonna put in my grandmother and we'll search for her. She has kind of an interesting story. Um, and I told you that I started when I was a teenager. One of the things was my grandmother lived to be in her 90s, late 90s, and I would sit and she would tell us stories. So I actually was able to write those down. So I have about 30 pages of stories that she told. Okay, Fanny Beeriner, uh, if I hear, it gives me just a quick look. Again, I can kind of see to make sure it's her. Um, we'll pull that up. My grandfather, grandmother's mother died when she was 11. And there were several children in the family. And as each one got close to age 13, this says age 14, but I happen to know my grandmother was actually 13 when she came on the ship because when she arrived at her destination in Illinois, it was on her birthday and she turned 14 that day. Okay, here is my grandmother, Fanny Beeriner. It says she was 14. Um, she actually came by herself. Uh, she was not with any relatives, but they had gone to the port to, um, and bought a ticket, my grand, great grandfather did. And he met this family, uh, Warner, Werner were their names and they had three children. And so the deal was my grandmother would kind of hang with them and kind of watch over the children. Um, this littlest one, no, it wasn't. It was this boy um, actually died um, as soon as they arrived in the United States, which kept the family in quarantine, my grandmother as well, for a couple days. She spoke no English and such and got kind of caught there at um, Ellis Island for a while and then was put on a um, train to Chicago. But here at the top, you'll see. Now, you're gonna run into this. This is in German, and you might not know what all of these mean, okay? I didn't, so what I had to do was find like a cheat sheet, and I, I don't know for sure if I included that. Anyway, um, it's a lot of different words, common words used for different countries. And that will help you to know that, you know, the surname, the first name, um, their age, and things like that. So you might want to have one of those handy as you're searching some of these records. I've done some research on her ship and things like that, and it was really kind of neat. Now I can go back here and edit my search. What time is it? Okay. Um, I'm going to just show you real quick one thing again with my grandfather. He came a little bit earlier, but some of the questions they asked on, on these were kind of fun. Oh, that's naturalization. naturalization. Well, anyway, you can find naturalization and stuff like that, too. I was going to look for immigration here. Do, 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 do. This is the one. Nope, that's not it. This is it. 
again, you got to watch your names spelling. Okay, one of the things um, on this one, he's right on the top line, it said he was a laborer, he was 18. Um, but right here in this one, did he have $50? No, he only had $25 when he came. <laughs> so um, that kind of shows you maybe why they had to come. You know, he was poor. He had to find a job. He actually had a brother living here at that time. So that was probably the other reason. Okay, let's back up to that front page again. Immigration is, is good. Um, when you are on the Ancestry, you can actually also find information on their ships, pictures of the ships, things like that. Okay, so we've kind of been through these four. Now let's go back here to the top. Uh, I'm covering it up. Okay, we've done pretty much the search. The next is message boards. Message boards are other people who have trees on Ancestry and you're looking for someone and you can't find anything or maybe you want some help or you're thinking is anybody else looking for this person? So you can type in a name or a topic and then search. And what will happen is if people are talking between themselves, like for instance, I found some German relatives who I didn't even know, but we are obviously related because of the information we've both collected. We proved it. And it's kind of fun to find these lost people. But anyway, in the conversations that you have, it's a private, private messaging system. You can actually um, type in your name and it'll pull them up to show you who's talking about this person. And it gives you a chance then to connect to them and ask them a question. Do you think so-and-so, you know, was related to this and can I see your tree and things like that. So message boards are kind of fun. You probably will do that a little bit later after you get more information down. The next is the learning center. This is something you'll want to do. As you see here, it's research aids and what they have done is provide for you some tips and how to um, search for things and maybe help you know what you're doing. Okay, here's for getting started. Um, here's DNA down here if you're interested in that. It tells you a few things. Here's census tips. And when you click on these, um, you're going to get some um, information to read about but they're going to talk you through some of these things. Okay, you'll see here some pages and each of these are just like a information collected that they've collected and put together for you to help you understand what you're looking at, why you're looking at it and you know, just to help you know what's going on. Okay, I got an X out of that one. And then of course we have um, census, we have basics, uh, military comes under that, immigration, here's more about um, finding your, in, your uh, ancestors and such, military, and then ethnic, if, um, for instance, finding German ancestors, that's one of the most popular ones to find, but in some ways it's very hard because the old German script was used before Hitler. When Hitler came into power, he forbid them to use it. So it disappeared very quickly. And now because of that, there's very uh, limited people in the world that can actually read those, those things. So um, next after Learning Center, there's charts and forms. I made a packet of some that will work. These are also some ideas. You can download these. Um, here's a research one, which is good. It can kind of list things that you've looked for and such like that. And here's the group sheets. I included ones that I use down here in Texas with my group, so. And then finally, um, well, you got census forms too, I guess. Um, and then new collections. Um, 
they're always, always adding more and more records. I get notices probably once or twice a week of some new things that are added. Here they're saying there's 10,583. Um, you can search, uh, narrow your search down to these here on the left, or here you can look down. Um, Canadian find a grave, I've had to use that because we have some buriners that live in Canada and it just goes on and on and on. There's 11 pages down here of them. So those will help you too. Um, where are we? Some tips that I have found to be helpful. <clears throat> I've done this a long time and I'm continually learning. And of course, in our group, we have people who are brand new, never done it before, people who really know what they're doing. And so I'm constantly trying to get what is helpful to me. Okay, I made kind of a list here. So you might want to write a few things down if you need to. First of all, use the sheets, the forms. If you just start writing in a notebook, it's going to get confusing. I did that as a kid. And to this day, I still have those notes that I made when I was like 14 years old. And it jumps from family to family and back again and this way and that way. So keep the sheets and add things to the sheets as you use them. Um, if you want, you can validate them um, according to records and maybe star it so you know it's, it's exactly right and stuff. So. If you go to other people's trees, at one point in here, it showed how you could uh, look at public trees here, right here, public member trees. Remember that, um, okay, I guess you can't do it with the library edition. When you look at someone's tree, you're, you're hoping that they did their best searching. I have found so many mistakes on people that say, oh, that's it, oh, that's it. And with just a couple clicks, they've added it to their tree and it's not right, it's not correct. And I try so hard to be sure that I have correct information. One of the things is, is because I make these books and I happen to, I, I just show you here. Here's a book that I make. Um, I make it for families and to be sure that I have accuracy, you know, I, I just need to make sure that all of my information is correct. And so I've made seven books now and hopefully, you know, I, I try to keep them up to date and such, but be sure that if you go to public trees, there's always a lot of information there, but just be careful because you can get sidetracked so quick. All right, uh, again, stay organized. That's one of the most important things. If you're not organized, you'll never know what you got. Okay, now, if you're looking for things um, and maybe you're not ready to join Ancestry.com, Ancestry can be expensive. Um, the one year is actually um, $200 a year. Um, they have a second step, which is a U.S. edition, or no, it's called international, and that's 300 for one year. And the top one that has um, Fold3, which is military, it has all the newspapers.com. It really has an 800 number that you can call and ask for help. That's 400 a year. I have used it when I'm researching a book, especially international. But then as soon as I'm done, I drop back to the cheaper one because you really have to use it to get your money's worth. Now, the nice thing is they will let you bounce back and forth between them and they, they allot the money. You don't lose any money. They can still apply it and, and save it and such. So that works. You can do it by the month. You can do it by every six months. So those things will work for you. But there are things that you can do for free. Um, Pinterest, if you use Pinterest, type in genealogy on the search, you'll be amazed at all of the forms and information and things that you can find on Pinterest, and it's all free. You can go to YouTube 
And again, type in uh, genealogy. There's all kinds of videos that will show you things and where to look. Uh, talk to older family members. When you're researching, you'll probably want to start with grandparents because they've probably been gone now and yet they're still recent enough that you know you should be able to find um, records fairly easily. So talk to them. I sometimes carry a, a little tape recorder when I'm at family reunions, just in case. Uh, My Heritage is a website that's free. You can start a tree up to 250 people. After that, then they will charge you. Um, you can go to Ellis Island. They have a website, Ellis Island, that is also um, good that you can find those who have immigrated. You can even use Google, a Google search, type in a name. Um, sometimes they will take you to Ancestry to find the information. Sometimes it will show up in a will or a land acquisition, um, a land grant, something like that. But especially you will find obituaries much of the time. I ran into a problem with my husband's in Indiana. So I actually called, I found and called their public library in Spencer, Indiana. And they had a genealogist and she helped me. She spent some time and for like $20, I got a whole packet of information. Um, you can use Facebook. You can search a name on Facebook. You can even put genealogy into Facebook. They have lots of um, uh, sites or accounts that deal only in genealogy. And then in Peoria County, we have the Peoria County genealogy, I can never say that, uh, genealogical society. It's about $20 a year, which is a good deal. And then probably nine months out of the 12, you get a speaker and they meet in the north branch of the Peoria Library. Of course, now with COVID, that has not happened, but they are on Facebook. Um, and just look for them and they do have really good things to do and a lot of help as well. Um, uh, last, one of the last things that I can say is your phone. When you're places um, and you're searching and you come across something, take a picture of it. Take a picture and that will help you. I also have a little scanner. It's about 11 inches long, it was under $100, and you can just drag it across a page or drag it across a photo. And it, it attaches then to a little, um, a little uh, plug-in thing, and then you can connect it to your computer and you've got all of those photos. And lastly, on your phone again, there's a free app, um, at least for Apple, it's called Photo Mine. P-H-O-T-O-M-Y-N-E. And what you can do, it's free, but you hold it over a photo, press a button for like three seconds, and you get a perfect, a perfect picture of it. And again, you can transfer it to your computer or whatever. But it's a great way to have something with you and get, get that information on a moment's notice. So anyway, well, that's kind of about all I was thinking of saying today. Um, Catherine, what do you think? Is there time for questions yet? Or sure, yeah, I'm just posting really quick here. Um, I don't know if the, if the format works very well here in the comments, but um, I just posted the tips that you just mentioned. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks again for hanging in there with our technical difficulties. Um, here we go. All right. Hi again. Um, photo mine. Yes, photo mine was the free app that um, Elaine just mentioned that can take really good pictures of things. So you could just, if you see something when you're out, you can just grab your phone out and get a high quality photo of it. So you can take it home with you. Um, does anyone have any questions for Elaine? And also, um, 
as those come in or after we do a few questions, I'm going to walk us through how to actually access Ancestry Library Edition from your homes. Okay. So, but does anyone have any burning questions they want to get out there first? Maybe I can answer. <laughs> I don't see anything coming in just now. Let me just check for Facebook. Any questions? Okay. Well, while people are thinking of their questions, oh, Donna says, thank you. She loved the info. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So this is how you can access um, Ancestry Library Edition from the comfort of your home. You go to our website, hillacoffeepubliclibrary.org, um, and go up here to where it says catalog. And you click catalog, and that brings us to our catalog page here. And once it loads up, you'll see that here we have this logo that's kind of um, blurred out for Ancestry, and it says log in to activate. So the first thing you need to do is at the top of the page here, you click log in, and I'm just going to log in with my own information here. And that's your library card number. That's my library card number and my PIN number. So if you need help retrieving those numbers, um, well, you should have your library card number. Um, if you need help retrieving your PIN, just give us a call and we can help you out with that. Um, so now you see, once I've logged in, this uh, little logo here is no longer blurred out. Um, and you can go ahead and click it. And that brings you to the page that Elaine has been showing us um, for the past few minutes here. So hopefully that helps. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop that screen share. Um, anyone have any questions on that or think of anything else to um, ask Elaine? One thing I'm asked a lot of time is about DNA, if anyone's interested in that. Um, let's see if I can find it. Okay. Can you see the DNA now? I think you need to hit share screen. Share again? I thought I did already. Yeah. Um, you have to hit the green button, then choose the window, and then hit the blue button. <laughs> <laughs> green button. The green share screen, and then choose yeah. the screen. Well, that's my problem. The green button hardly shows. Oh. Green button. Here. Share. Yay. No? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Here's DNA. I did DNA a few years ago. I've got my mother to do it, my uncle to do it, um, and that. And it comes back, first of all, with general information. I happen to be 93% German. Really? When all my grandparents were from Germany. Um, so I wasn't too surprised about that. Um, here it lists my matches. Now this means here, 329 people, fourth cousin or closer, who have accounts on Ancestry share some part of my DNA. They could be far, far down the line, as many as I think they go maybe seven, even eight generations away. But these are people. And what's kind of neat is I can click on this and see all my matches. And then I can contact them if I want to. Here's my mother, my brother, my uncle. And as I go down the list, there's other people who happen to be in my family. So I can share with them. I can talk to them, anything like that. Another thing I like about this is called True Lines over here on the side. And Oops, uh, True Lines, what did was kind of organize it for me, my DNA to show me quickly um, who these people are. Uh, just real quick to show you, these are pictures that I've collected 
of my grandparents and such. And you can see I've even got some very, very far back. So um, that's kind of a neat thing too. DNA testing is basically um, $99, but if you watch the sales, you can get it much cheaper, 59 plus the $10 shipping or maybe 69, something like that. Um, and then it's free from there on. You get to um, put some things on Ancestry if you want to, but you don't have to join. Okay, they also have a health one now that will include health kinds of things, but that's a lot more expensive, about $180. So, so that's a possibility. If, if you've give, been given a DNA test from Ancestry and want to know, that's what you're going to get. You can take it deeper or more if you subscribe to Ancestry, but you don't have to. You can take the test and that's it. And so. there is a question coming in. Oh, sorry, were you finished? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, Lynn asks, do any sites tell what people died of? Um, sometimes. Uh, it depends if you can find a death certificate. Okay, a lot of times a death certificate will come up when you go into the birth death part, remember that we saw. Um, I myself didn't have too much luck with that until I hired a researcher in Germany and they actually gave me the time of death and the cause of death on 16 different relatives. So, so anyway, and this is what, um, this is actually what ancestry looks like. Um, I can show you quickly. Um, I've been talking so much about my grandfather, and this would be his page on Ancestry. Get it to come out and look under profile. It's neat. I, I love Ancestry. I truly do. Um, this is my grandfather. Here's a list of all of the records that I've attached to him. So you can see how much research I've been doing on him. Here it kind of tells a, a life story of what happened, um, but you also get a gallery. These are photos that I've collected. I try to put them on Ancestry so that I can share them with other family members if I want. Here's their house in Germany and so it's now a museum. That's why I have so many pictures of it. So you see here, that's what you can get. And hints, hints means that Ancestry has found something they want me to look at. Um, so those are things that you'll get if you subscribe to Ancestry. You'd have to build the tree and then they generate all of so many of those things for you. This they've made up a story. So that they made for me. So that's how that works. Um, I like Ancestry. I know it's somewhat expensive, but it's once you learn it and it's not hard to learn, I really think it's all there. You just have to have the time to search and it does take time. It does, unfortunately. I thought when I retired, I was going to have all this time, you know, <laughs> and I'm so busy. <laughs> But, well, thank you so much for, for taking time to join us today. This has been very interesting and I think helpful. Um, and in just a couple of last minutes here, does anyone else have a question? Um, if it's too much to type out, do feel free to raise your hand um, with the little tool at the bottom of the screen and I can let you talk. Um, Looks like maybe oh, I see some people I had their kids in school. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for coming. Um, any any last last tips from you, Elaine, or um, none that I can think of right offhand, but I help a lot of people down here. I have started trees for people. I I kind of hesitate to say I'd start your tree for you, but 
You might get to oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't believe how many trees I've got on my account. But um, I for sure, if if anyone would like either my um, email address or something and send me a question or something you've run into and need to be steered another way, I that's fine. I mean, I do that down here all the time. Um, so if you'd like, I can uh, put that here in the chat, um, you know, in case you would ever feel like you <laughs> needed to ask for help. <laughs> I know that happens. Um, people can also contact me at the library, if that's okay with you, Elaine. Sure, and, um, sure. I can pass on your contact info to them that way as well. Okay, there's my email. And like I said, I'm down here. I'm just always on call. <laughs> the unfortunate part down here is we're in retirement. So these people are like 85 to 95 years old. <laughs> I'm one of the young ones. And, you know, they have trouble remembering their grandmother's names and it, it makes for hard searching. <laughs> mm -hmm. So start now. Don't put it off. You need to while you still have a good memory or you still have people in your family who can remember these things. It's much easier that way. Okay. Well, well it's been fun. I've, I've never done a meeting like this before. I'm sure, I'm sure I could have done a better job, but, but no, this was fun. I, I, I'm a quilter. So I do, you probably notice my quilts in the back. Um, but I think really genealogy is more my calling. I, I'm really into it. I can spend 12 hours a day in front of my computer and it's bedtime and I just find another hint and oh my God, I just can't leave it. <laughs> so yeah, just ask my husband, he'd tell you I, I'm a hopeless, hopeless case. So I can see how it could be very absorbing. It's just, I mean, it just keeps going, doesn't it? Oh, it does. But. It does. And as soon as you find one thing, then you find 10 more, you know, and it's just, it just explodes sometimes and it's like i can't lose this i gotta follow it so <laughs> but stay organized that's the biggest thing i can tell you mm -hmm. if you don't start from the beginning you'll be just drowning in a sea of paperwork you know so that's your best advice i have for you well thanks for that advice and i think with that we'll go ahead and um wrap up our meeting today. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank and, you. It's been fun. Out there, everyone. Okay. All right.